I'd like to begin our program for the afternoon with our panelists from San Joaquin and San Diego counties who are going to be talking about their creative strategies for connecting justice-involved individuals to services. And this is going to continue the theme from this morning of how can we think about the way we're doing business a little bit differently in order to achieve the ultimate outcome that we're hoping to achieve for the clients that we work with and the, excuse, the community members, the clients that we're working with, um, defendants and offenders. And San Joaquin County is going to talk about their collaborative strategies for working with violent AB 109 offenders, and San Diego County is going to be talking about their approach to split sentence offenders. So I'd like to turn it over to Stephanie James, the Chief Probation Officer from San Joaquin County, the Honorable William Johnson from San Joaquin County Superior Court, and Mark Helms, the Chief of Police from Lod the Lodi Police Department. Thank you. Hi, good morning everyone. We're here from San Joaquin County and we're here to talk about some of our early successes with AB 109 and the implementation. One of the first things I want to acknowledge is in San Joaquin County, one of our biggest strengths is the strong collaborate, collaboration we have between all of our members of our Community Corrections Partnership as well as our community. We have about a good hundred people that attend each of our full partnership CCP meetings. And through that tremendous collaboration, we have really achieved some early successes. One of our biggest strengths in our county is that we do have a balanced plan. We have created a plan that provides both offender accountability, we've increased jail bed space, we have intensive probation supervision. We also have many alternatives to incarceration that we've put in place, as well as a variety of supportive and transitional services that are provided by our partner agencies. We, as a probation department, follow the principles of effective intervention, and we employ evidence-based practices through, throughout not just the work that we do, but the Sheriff's Office, Behavioral Health Services, and our community-based organizations all have evidence-based practices in the work that they're doing as well. We've created a variety of innovative programs and strategies, and we have used data-driven decision-making to help create the strategies that we're going to talk about today. Uh, we have employed an outside evaluator who was responsible for working collaboratively with us to do a six-month preliminary evaluation report as well as a one-year report on realignment. Uh, currently, we're working on our second year plan at this point. So in the first six months of realignment, we received 536 PRCSs in our county. And what we found is that 56.7% of them were at high risk for committing a violent offense. In San Joaquin County, this was especially alarming. As you may know, Stockton is our city seat. And in 2011, we had a record number of homicides of 58 homicides. In 2012, that number again broke our prior record and we had 71 homicides. So violence was clearly a strong concern of our Community Corrections Partnership and knowing that of these new of this new population under our jurisdiction, with 56.7% of them being um, at high risk for committing another violent offense, we knew we had to really brainstorm and put some strategies in place to try and address those behaviors. The other key finding that we found in that first six-month preliminary report is that we had a huge issue with the number of bench warrants in our county. In our county, we were having about twice the statewide average in bench warrants, and that wasn't uncommon with just this population. We are also seeing those same kinds of numbers with our general probation population. And having offenders out on outstanding bench warrants has been a problem that's plagued us for a number of years, and we knew it was finally time to really try and strategize on how we could address this. So to address these two issues, and this is what we're going to be focusing on today, is the offenders at risk for high violence, as well as the number of bench warrants, we created four new strategies. We put in place a violent crimes unit, and that's an intensive probation supervision unit that only deals with the offenders that are at high risk for violent offenses. We also created a high, offender, a high violent offender court, and you're going to hear a lot about that from Judge Johnson today. 
We also created a CCP task force, and Chief Helms to my left will be talking about that today. And then we also contracted with Friends Outside, which is a community-based organization, for a warrant reduction advocacy program. And that was to really help us in not just reducing the number of offenders on outstanding warrants with our realigned population, but with our general probation population as well. And with all of these strategies and throughout the development of our implementation plan and the revisions to our plan as we're moving forward through realignment, public safety has always been our number one priority. So we believe, again, in reducing recidivism by focusing on behavior change, and these programs have helped us in that way. So I'll turn it over to Judge Johnson, who's going to talk more about the High Violent Offender Court.